I'm so excited to be here with Marike Frick and talk about how to get the attention of journalists. Welcome on the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. So we have met first in person, was it 2018? Yes, in so. San Diego. Yeah, when you came to a mastermind day, that was fun. <laughs> Yes. And that was around social media marketing world. And I offered the mastermind day and you came and several other European clients. And since then we've stayed in touch, but this is our first interview. So I'm excited to dive in and have you share first, how come you're doing what you're doing today? Like what's the, what's the story behind your work? I don't really know how this happened, really, <laughs> because I'm a trained journalist and I my goal in life was to become a journalist since I'm 14 years old. So for me, it was like uh, I, I got a journalist education and then I worked for big newspapers, online magazines, and it was a dream come true and uh, big women magazines. And I thought I'm never going to do anything else. Now I'm a journalist. Now I'm settled. Then I moved to your country or your your second country, Switzerland, and uh, I was I had a very small baby and um, everything changed. I didn't get the same jobs anymore because I was kind of far away. I couldn't do the same kind of uh, like traveling interviews and all this stuff. So um, there was not enough money in the account really for me anymore. Um, and I was really, I mean, before I was really a successful freelance journalist, I had been one for like six, seven years, everything was going really fine. And suddenly I found myself with, oh, okay, I need to come up with new ideas. And mm. it happened that at that time I was um, going to a co-working space every day to work on things, work on ideas, do pitches to, um, to other journalists. and. Um, people started to ask me questions. They said, oh, you're a journalist. You know, I've been sending press releases and never, nobody ever answers me. What can I do? So I thought, okay, I'll give some advice. And uh, this turned into a seminar that I was giving in that co-working space. And everybody was really excited. They were saying like, oh, this is really mind blowing what you're telling me. Because I thought doing PR, doing um, press work is uh, writing press releases. And I changed that point of view. So this is how it happened. And then one magic sentence was being said to me. One uh, woman who was participating in my seminar, which was offline, you know, like old school, she said, why don't you put this online? And mm -hmm. I thought like, what do you mean? Like uploading it to YouTube or what? And she said, no, you know, there are things online happening and you can actually sell your knowledge online. And that's when I got hooked and I dived into the world of online marketing and uh, now I'm uh, offering several courses um, for people who want to get press coverage um, and it's going really, really well. And I really could not have foreseen this at all. I'm not working as a journalist anymore because this is going so well. So this is your new dream come true that you didn't know you had. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I like it. I like life to take turns. You know, I like I like the new adventure. How long have you been doing this uh, online, this peer work? Um, I've just celebrated my fifth anniversary. So five years ago, I pressed the button and my website was online and nobody looked at it, obviously, until I started to do online marketing. Uh, so yeah, five years I've been doing this. And uh, for the past uh, two, three years, it's been going really well and I can really make a living of this and earn so much more than what I earned as a freelance journalist because among us, um, freelance journalists are paid really, really badly. So yeah. this is actually nicer than what I had before. But five years is, is, you know, that's a decent time. So what has changed or has anything changed in that time? Well, um, I have a team. I, um, I have hired people. I'm managing people. That is the biggest change for me. I started as a freelancer, you know, like someone who just puts a website online and tries to sell an online product. Um, I quickly hired a VA and that I worked with that assistant for several years. And now in the past two years, I think I've been hiring other journalists to work with me and to coach my students. And I've been hiring uh, more assistants and I've been hiring program managers. So this is really um, a big, big change for me. That's a big change. 
What about the industry itself? Like how you get the attention? Has that changed over the last years? The last years? No, I, I think, I mean, basically I, in the beginning I studied all all the online marketing stuff and it still works for me. I go out with content, I do advertisements, I show people who I am, what what message I have. I do storytelling. I'm a very big fan of storytelling. And that has been working for me consistently in the past past years, I must say. Let's come to the topic of the episode, which is how to get the attention of journalists. Like someone listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube says to himself, okay, I've been trying this. I, I, I want the attention of journalists. I've been following them maybe on Twitter or whatever tips they've gotten in the past and it's just not working. What should they do? It's extremely difficult. <laughs> it's extremely difficult because journalists are so busy and, and it's, it's, it's a shame, but there are like the newsrooms are getting smaller because of, uh, you know, they have issues. The, they don't sell as many ads anymore. So they have financial issues and they fire people. And then you have less and less journalists dealing with more and more news and content. And trying to get the attention of someone like this is trying to get the attention of, I don't know, busy mother of twins who's also working and juggling the household. You know, it's, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult. So what tips do you have? Is there any kind of step-by-step -step process to get there? Yeah, the worst thing you do can you can do with a mother of twins who also has a job and is <laughs> is juggling the household is giving her a long letter to read. Yeah, so she doesn't have time. So think think of a journalist like that. A journalist doesn't have time. He's not going to read your press release. And so many people around the globe spend so much time writing press releases. Like first they write the draft and then it goes to the boss and then the marketing i don't know what and then they do three versions of it and then they finally send it to the journalist and the journalist never reads it especially if you say in the subject line press release those are the emails that get deleted right away because most of the time there's nothing in those press releases that interests the journalist so first step is really stop writing press releases it's not it's not worth it what you need to do is say like a, like a quick shout out. Um, Hi, I have a topic for you. Are you interested? It can be really, really short. It's, it's like a short email. It can be a short phone call. It can be a short message on social media if that journalist is active in social media. And here I see some difference, differences in the countries. I'm from Germany. In Germany, journalists are not that like that active on social media, most of them. In other countries, like I think Great Britain is a much more active, I see much more active journalists there. In the States, the journalists are a lot more active in social media. So you could try follow, following a journalist that you find interesting on social media, commenting on his stuff, giving him ideas about what he could write about. And that's mm -hmm. the magic sauce. Like you're someone who gives the journalist a reason to write about something. Mm -hmm. So you want to be the reason the you know, that someone listening, they want to find a reason for journalists to pay attention to them by following them online, like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. What, what are the best platforms for that? It really depends on where the journalist is. If he or she is on Twitter, then follow them there. I mean, that's then that's a good, a good starting point. Like in Germany, I always tell people find out their email address and email them because they are more conservative. They're not so active on social media. So you're really doing a fine job if you find out the email address. Um, quick call to the newsroom. Um, Hi, who's covering um, society topics at your um, newsroom? Who's covering health issues? And then you have the name and then it's quite easy to find out the email address. And then send a really quick pitch and the pitch should not be, hey, I'm, do I'm great, you know, you should write about me. The pitch should be, I have something interesting to say. Would you like to talk to me? It's, like, it's a bit like dating or like going to a party where you meet someone. Um, bragging about yourself is not going to make that person be interested. But if you say, three years ago in Venezuela, this is what happened to me. The other person's going to listen because you have something something to say, you have a story to tell. Mm. So it, wouldn't you have to pitch the story subject line already? 
Yeah, the subject line is, is crucial because most of the emails are never being opened. So okay. if you have a story to tell, um, what happened, in, happened to me in Venezuela changed my life. Could be a story, like a, a tagline, a subject line for a journalist who writes about life-changing stuff, who writes about like a women's magazine maybe, and they always look for stories about women who have had like life-changing experiences. That could work for them. The second thing that can work is you, that you offer your knowledge. So let's say you are um, a Facebook advertisement expert and you pitch a journalist whose topic is marketing. And you can say, most companies are making three crucial mistakes. These are the mistakes and this is what I know about them. Are you interested in an interview? Mm -hmm. So it's really about pitching either a story or your expert knowledge. Yeah, not how, oh, I built an amazing business and I'm awesome. <laughs> type exactly. of a story that's no one is interested in that yeah yeah so okay someone sends an email but you know maybe there's no reply do you follow up do you just try other journalists both both really um i always tell my people to follow up at least once because you know the inbox of a journalist is like 100 emails per day and they have very little time, so they just scroll through. And sometimes they open an email and think, oh, this could be interesting. And then they get a phone call or they go to the next meeting and the email goes down, you know, and they simply forget about it. So it's really, there's no shame if you have made a good proposal, a good story offer, a good like expert knowledge offer. There's no harm in saying, hey, just a quick reminder. I sent you an email last week with, with this story proposal or this expert knowledge proposal. Would that be something for you? I'm, I would be happy about a quick reply. And um, yeah, there's no harm in that. But also what you can do is just try to pitch this topic to another journalist. Because what you don't do anymore, if you follow my advice, is write the same email to 100, 200, 300 journalists, which is what most PR people, like traditional PR people do, they, they, they write one email, like one press release, and it goes to many, many newsrooms. It just doesn't work. So if you pitch a topic to one journalist and this journalist is not interested, try the next one. That It should fit, obviously. It should still be someone who writes about marketing. Mm -hmm. So you would wait maybe 24 hours or? Oh, at least, at least. Like... Um, if it's really like something, let's say Bill and Melinda Gates split up and you are a divorce lawyer and you know about stuff around divorces for rich people, you could offer your knowledge. And then I would definitely follow up really quickly because, yeah, this because is it's a timely topic and after two days it's outdated. Yes. Yeah. But if you offer knowledge about Facebook advertising, you can follow up like maybe four, five, six days later. That's uh -huh. still fine. Give the journalist a bit of time to think about the topic, maybe talk to his colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. So it de depends on the time sensitivity of the topic, how much time you would give the journalist to come back. Yeah. Exactly. What about uh, there is this tool for uh, especially US uh, or English based uh, businesses help a reporter out, Haro, which you know I recommend to my clients who are looking for free press coverage. Does anything like that exist uh, for Europe or for German speaking audiences or, or Czech or Polish? Do you know of anything like that? Unfortunately, there's nothing. There was a service some years ago and they closed it down again. Um, I know the reasons for Germany. For Germany, I know that journalists are very protective with their, with their planning. So they don't want other people to know that like help a reporter out works like this, that they put out like announcement. I'm looking for people who have had life changing experiences while traveling. And then you can pitch and say, yeah, I was in Venezuela and I had a life changing experience. In Germany, they are afraid that competitors will find out that they're working on this or that story and they don't want to put that out. Many of them use their social media platforms nowadays, like they would put it on their personal profile in social media, mm -hmm. um, which is not helpful for you because you probably don't have the friend access. Um, but yeah, there's not really a tool that, that works. This tool that was active some years ago has shut down because it 
obviously it was not working really well. Yeah. So it's, it's more the mindset, I guess the English speaking market is so big. And yeah. uh, if, if some newspaper in the U S or UK is writing a story, even if someone copies the idea, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But I guess in a smaller country or I don't know, Germany is not small, but I guess it's more the attitude. Uh, tradition. That, it's more traditional. Yeah. yeah. Much more traditional. I, I am getting in touch with reporters uh, on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Typically you have to kind of know them. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't know to follow them. And then uh, when you're friends with them, after you've made that connection, it's so easy to get actually in the news again. Yeah, absolutely. Once you have been in contact with someone, always follow up with new ideas, be helpful, tell them, you know, um, I could help you with this or would you need some like you could you could even help like I know someone for your topic that you're looking for. I can put you in contact with just be helpful, be someone who's useful and then you will never annoy a journalist ever again, which you do with writing press releases. Yeah, that's exactly it. I'm uh, friends with two journalists, one in Switzerland and one in Iceland. And I have been interviewed by both and I sent them over people with a similar background story as me. So they're like, they're always like in my feet. So it's, it's very good to see that you could get interviewed again. Although, of course, they're not going to interview the same person again and again. There needs to be even a whole year between or how long would you say that needs to be time? That really differs. But as you said, like in a local newspaper, they would say, like, you have been in the newspaper like twice this year, we won't cover you again. Um, for a magazine, it would be even longer. Like yeah. a big magazine will say, okay, at least two, three, four years have to pass by before we write about you again. Yeah. Would it help if you are pitching that you can reference previous press coverage so that they know that you are a person of interest? I get this question a lot. I, I, had, I don't really have an answer to that because I think it's personal. Like some journalists will think, <clears throat> okay, she has already been covered by our competitor. Hmm. Mm. Others will think, oh, she has media experience. Great. Yeah. It, I think it's really personal and it's very difficult to put it into like, you know, a rule or something. Yeah. So hit and miss depends on the person that is receiving it. Yeah. I wouldn't. I think I, th I think I wouldn't name a direct competitor. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. We, we have this thing in Iceland, uh, you know, they're like, there are not so many newspapers and magazines. And if you have had, they call it a queen interview, which means if you have had a big interview, you've maybe been on the cover of the magazine or at least in the middle where the, there's like the opening then another newspaper or magazine will not touch you. Like yeah. it's almost like you're, untouchable for at least six months of a year because they feel like we've copied from the others. So, exactly. yeah. So it's very hard to get another press release. Yeah. I don't know. It depends on the size of the country, I guess. Yes, absolutely. And then there's always a difference. Like, like there's like um, a newspaper that writes about economics and you could um, approach them with your knowledge about, for instance, in your case, online marketing. And then there's a women's magazine where you could tell your story as a bu business entrepreneur that is successful. So two very different approaches and they wouldn't mind at all if you were in, at the same time, you know, if you were being published at the same time. Correct. Correct. It's okay. about being really creative and finding for each journalist that you want to contact the perfect pitch and the perfect match. So in order to find the journalist, like, would you be then obviously figuring out who wrote an article if you see an interesting article? Yes, that's a good way. Like you can, you can look in, uh, you can check the database of that magazine online, or you can flip through some magazines. You can buy magazines online these days. They are e-papers. So you don't even need to go to the store and buy the magazine. You can flip through it online. And then you can check, okay, who's writing about health issues frequently? And then you could contact that person. Or you just do a quick call to the newsroom and ask who's covering health uh, issues in your newsroom. That's often a lot easier. Okay, so let's say you get the interview. What What is, from your experience, the next step you should do? You got the interview? Great. But how is this going to be useful for your business? So what you can do is you can connect 
your experience with social media. That's one thing like you can say, okay, I'm, I'm being interviewed by the radio. Take pictures, how you are in the studio, um, how you're doing the interview. And then when it's being, uh, being aired, you could like, I don't know, film yourself listening to whatever. You can use it for your regular social media marketing. And then the second thing obviously is that it gives you some, some prestige. It gives you some, um, I don't want to say fame, but, but it, it, it elevates your brand. Mm -hmm. So you need to make people aware of it. So put yeah. it in your, in your um, email signature, for instance. So every email that goes out for a while could be, listen to my interview on radio, I don't know what, or yeah. see my latest, latest article in and then the name of the magazine. It will, even if people don't click, it will make an impression on them. You can put it on your website, obviously. Um, you can, um, I know people who, who put it in every proposal, like they make a proposal for clients uh -huh. and then they, they attach their latest press coverage success. And one client told me since the day that I started doing that, nobody has ever questioned my prices anymore because, you know, they see that I've been in all these newspapers and magazines and they, the first impression they get is she's worth her money. Great idea. Great idea. Yeah. Of course, we also put often the logos on our sales pages, you know, uh, from some of the latest media coverage. Uh, or on a landing page where you want people to sign up for freebie. I do think this is really important. You know, when when an interview with me got published in Forbes, uh, we had a little competition, like, you know, having people share the article and they could win access to a, a masterclass I was doing that otherwise would cost 47. Yeah, I mean, also that is a good idea. I mean, you can use it in any way, make people aware of it. Like don't, don't, some people start doing press, um, like PR and they, they think like this will bring me clients automatically. But yeah. what I think, what, what press coverage does, it, it elevates your brand and then it leads to never having to discuss prices again. It leads to people inviting you to do speeches and it, it leads to other things. And it's not the automatism that I've been on businessinsider.com and now I have like 5,000 people on my website and five new clients. Most of the times that doesn't happen. But what I see is people who consistently work on the press coverage, they really yeah, have, a, have a boost for the business because people call them and say, hey, do you want to speak at my event? I have seen you in whatever. Um, they can raise their prices without discussions. Things like that can happen, but you need to make people aware of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's similar to almost like giving a TEDx talk. Typically there's like 200 people in the room. Yeah. So only these 200 people see you. The real work starts when the video comes out and then you need to do the marketing yourself. So I think it's similar. It makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. Absolutely. So one media coverage obviously then helps to another one because you start to feel that you can pitch more people, but also people see that you're newsworthy. What should you do with all of this? You know, like on your website, should you have a whole list of all media coverage? What, what do you recommend that people kind of collect all of these media coverage? What should we do with them after we have promoted, obviously? So typically people put the most important names on their, on the, the, below the header or even above the header known um no, how is it in english known from no seen in or featured yeah. or featured yeah in, yes. so, yeah so since i'm working with german clients it's a bit different but um featured in uh, like a bar that makes a very good impression but then you can also have like a um a landing page or something on your website or like a menu um, drop down where it says press success or us in the press or me in the press. And then you can list all your, um, all your best success stories from, uh, from the media. You have to be careful because you can, there's some rules attached to this. There's property rights. So you cannot take the article for instance, or make a photo of the article and put it online. It can never be the full article. Like you could make a screen or like a photo of the headline and maybe the first sentences and then the 
the photo of you if the, if it's in a, in, a, in a physical magazine mm -hmm. and put that online that works um or you can ask may i have the the pdf and is it okay to put it on my website you need to ask for permission because it's property rights that you're touching but what yeah. you can yeah. always do is put a link i mean yeah that's yeah that's good for them and they will they will even be happy about it yeah, because I'm interviewed in different uh, countries, different languages, uh, we do a translation mm -hmm. as well. And then we link to the original from the translation. So we even publish the translation as a blog post, but it's very clear that this is an interview with me in a different magazine or newspaper. And the original version is not on my website, only the translation. Yeah. Great. Any other last tips? How can people find you? So I have a website that is obviously German and the English version is what journalists want. And in German is was Journalisten wollen. So that's my website and you can find me on YouTube as well. Um, you can find me on Facebook. I do very little on Instagram, but I'm there as well. Um, yeah, and I have a free Facebook group where, where people exchange ideas for how to get press coverage. All these are my channels and obviously I have tons of great free downloads on my website since uh, I'm doing online marketing for I've been doing online marketing for five years so I know the great value of free downloads so that's something to start with that's a great tip to join your Facebook group and get some grab some of those downloads from Ricket. thank you so much for joining the show it's been a pleasure thank you for the invitation <laughs>